All right, so we're going to talk about three different kinds of statistical tests that can go with an ordination. They are MRPP, Anosim, and Permanova. And so you can see here, I'm just waiting for the stats um, to go along with this p-value. Okay, so the first one is a multi-response permutation procedure. It uses the same dissimilarity measure as your NMDS. And what it does is it basically shuffles, it takes your species um, matrix and it holds it steady. And then it takes your group matrix from your environmental matrix and group membership and it shuffles the group membership around. Just like a t the resampling t-test that we talked about in, I think it was in week three. Um, and it's basically creating a random distribution of, um, of similarities based on when, when group membership has been randomized. And then it compares your, um, your actual dissimilarity to that random, randomized dissimilarity to see how, how possible it would be due to chance alone. So MRPP is kind of like a one-way ANOVA, but it's, it's a test of similarity instead of variation. It requires no additional distributional assumptions. You don't have to test for normality or homogeneity of variance. It does assume that you chose your distance measure appropriately and that your sample units are independent. And so the Y variables in an ordination and MRPP are not independent of one another but your sampling units should be. So you should be going to plots that are separate enough in space that they're not influencing one another. Okay, so that's one. Um, AnnoSim is called an analysis of similarity, and you can run a one-way AnnoSim, which is, again, it's pretty similar to the MRPP. It just gives you a slightly different statistic. Um, it's also non-parametric, so there's no assumption of normality. And it also operates on ranked dissimilarity, just like MRPP. It gives you a statistic, um, I should have said that MRPP gives you a statistic called A. Um, Anosim gives you a statistic called R. And it's kind of confusing, they should have used a different letter because it looks kind of like the R from correlation. Um, and it can range from negative one to one. Um, negative values of an anosim R actually suggest that there's more similarity um, between your sites than within your sites, which is actually bad. So you don't want a negative R, um, but it'll give you a P value and an R value. And the MRPP gives you an A value, which is your statistic, and an R, uh, sorry, an A value and a P value. And then there's Permanova, which is permutative multivariate ANOVA. And it just basically expands on what MRPP can do. You can do a one-way permanova, a two-way permanova, a nested, blocked. You can do all kinds of really cool things with permanova. It can also use any distance measure. And there are no distributional assumptions. But what's nice about permanova is it gives you a full ANOVA table as your output. It gives you degrees of freedom, sums of squares, mean squares, F ratios and p-values. So it's, it's probably going to feel like the most comfortable to you in some way. All right, so what to report? Basically, you get this coordination, you run some statistics. When you're reporting, like say you're writing a paper, you should write out the software you used because these procedures are not available in general stats packages. You should write out what distance measure you used and provide some justification for that choice. You should decide how your, or tell, tell people how your groups were designed, des defined and what your sample sizes were for each group. And then you should report your statistic, either your A for MRPP, your R for Anosim, or your F for Permanova. And of course, you should report your p-value. And that's what you would use as evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the communities are the same, okay? So one thing that's really neat is that you can also, once you have this ordination, you can run environmental variables through ordination space looking for correlations with community similarity. And so you learned about correlations already, um, and you can imagine what that might be like. Here you can see an example where heading off, you know, in this direction, um, these communities were more sandy from, from environments that were more sandy. And going in this direction, you have communities that were more silty and clay-like. And going in this direction, you have um, communities that had higher uh, copper, zinc, and 
and other elements. So you can look for environmental variables to correlate with your ordinations, which is a really neat option. There are other types of ordinations out there, like I mentioned. Here's just a list of them. Um, like I said, you know, I'm condensing what you might get in like a graduate level course down into just one quick lecture um, and lab. And so realize that there's a lot of other places you could do some really cool learning, but we're not going to go into them uh, in this class. And then some other neat things that, um, that these programs can do are things like indicator species analysis. Is there you know, a species that indicates for the presence of copper in the soil? Um, we talked about correlations. Mantel tests are really neat because they're like a correlation between two whole matrices. So it's not just two variables are correlated, but two whole matrices are correlated. So you see a lot of these types of um, analyses in specific disciplines. So you see a lot of PCA in genetics. Sometimes you see Mantel tests in genetics. Um, cluster analyses, you see those a lot in phylogenetics. Um, and you see all of these things in ecology. So that was pretty fast. Um, you, can, you can't really ask me for questions. I should have removed this slide. But hopefully, you'll ask each other questions and you'll ask me questions in the discussion board. All right.